this series, we are exploring the role of the women of the Ahl al-Bayt after Ashura. How did they continue to lead the campaign against injustice and tyranny and how they suffered throughout this tragedy and what lessons we can learn from their struggle. In this episode, we will examine the role of the leader of the ladies' caravan, Lady Zainab. Lady Zainab was the third child of Imam Ali and Lady Fatima. Her role in Karbala was significant and decisive. At the time of Karbala, she was almost 56 years old and a mother of four sons. Two of them were Orn and Muhammad and they were with her in Karbala. They fought for their uncle Imam Hussein. It is said that she was born either in the 5th Hijri or in the 6th Hijri. Sayyidah Zain of Tamalulaha, born in 5th of Jamadul Awwal, is authentic uh, narration, but some of, one or two of others are saying that she born in 1st of Shaban or 5th of Shaban. So we uh, usually go to the 5th of Jamadul Awwal and some people are following 1st of Shaban as well. She was brought up by the Holy Prophet, Imam Ali and Lady Fatima. Her brothers Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein always accompanied her and showed her utmost respect. In Islam, the people of the cloak are the most supreme and beloved personalities of Allah. And growing up under the shadow of these people meant Allah rewarded and elevated her status spiritually. On the matter of choosing her name, it is said that when Lady Zainab was born, her mother, Lady Fatima, asked Imam Ali to name her, on which the Imam replied, I will not precede the Messenger of Allah in such a matter. Then Lady Fatima went to the Holy Prophet and asked him to name her, on which Prophet Muhammad replied, I will not precede my Lord in such a matter. Eventually, Angel Jibrail came and said that, This newborn's name is Zainab. Almighty Allah has chosen this name for her. The name Zainab can literally be translated as pride of the father and some say it means a father's precious jewel. At a young age, it is said that she learnt the Holy Quran and the Holy Prophet's teachings on Islamic law and ethics by heart. Therefore, she seems to have gained a deep knowledge of the religion at a very early stage. It is said that when she was young, she saw a dream. She went to the Holy Prophet and explained her dream, that she saw a violent wind that made everybody look black and dark. As a result, she ran towards a great tree and held strongly to its leaves so that the wind would not take her away. But the wind unfortunately tore away the tree and threw it to the ground. She then told the Holy Prophet how she held onto the strong branch of that tree, but the wind broke it off. She then described how she held onto another branch, but that the wind broke that too. She then said that she tried to hang on to one or two of the leaves from that tree, but that the stormy wind broke that too. She then told the Prophet she woke up. While listening to this, tears came to the Prophet's eyes and he interpreted her dream as, The tree is your grandfather. The first branch is your mother and the other is your father. The two other branches are your brothers, Al Hassan and Al Hussein. The world will be blackened when they leave it and you will put on a mourning dress for their misfortunes. From a young age, she had witnessed all the miseries her father, mother and brother Imam Hassan had faced. She was aware when the Battle of Jamal took place and she helped in the campaigning for her father, Imam Ali, among the Arab women. Similarly, when Lady Fatma went to the first caliph to ask for her rightful inheritance, which in turn was denied by the caliph, Lady Zainab observed and remembered the speech given then by her mother. So Lady Zainab had grown up in an environment where her family was constantly the target of ruthless and oppressive rulers. The Arab society of the time was a patriarchal society where the role of women in politics was minimal. Although there are historical accounts of the Prophet's daughter, Lady Fatima, going to the court of the first caliph to demand her inheritance right, many women of the time did not stand up for their rights. 
we have seen from Zainab Salam Alaiha is something that we have not witnessed anyway because her mother went to the court of um, the ruler of her time who wasn't drunk, who wasn't uh, removing the sanctity of the Ahlul Bayt Salam that he hadn't removed in the sense that he hadn't taken um, you know the uh, the full veil from Fatma Zahra but Zainab Salam Alaiha had lost um, uh, many of those things because of Yazid that when she came she was taken as a captive and her mother wasn't taken a captive so she was um, in, in, in shackles and in ropes her hands <laughs> her hands had been tied behind her neck and she was with the children of her brothers and the children of her sisters so her sons had been killed, her brothers had been killed, the way she had been brought to the court of Yazid was uh, something that hadn't been witnessed by the Ahlul Bayt al-Musalam. Zainab Salam Allah Zainab al-Kubra Salam Allah has performed in her life uh, as a duty she has carried out for her brother and the Imam of her time is unique in all senses. It is unique not only just in the sense that it was um, unique in that time, it was something that the women did not do but even the times before it, the times after it, you will not see anything like it. Indeed, both women played an essential role in their times and a comparison of them would only bring the greatness of this family. But when we explore further in post-Ashura settings, out of many roles Lady Zainab also acted as a commander-in-chief of the remaining caravan. She wasn't just someone who took all these series of calamities, major calamities, up to the point of Karbala and during the time of Karbala. She not only did um, take that with resilience and strength and patience, but she was able really to lead a caravan of women, children, sick people, young children, under the duress and the harassment of their enemies, who were enemies jubilant to have killed and massacred their opposite side. Now sometimes you have a war and it's an equal war. Sometimes the enemy massacres the other side. You can imagine what kind of jubilation that other side would be feeling and what kind of, um, uh, you know, what kind of feelings they would have, the revenge and the, um, you know, the, uh, the real um, you know, violence and aggressiveness that those enemies would show. And yet, she was able to make sure that she takes her role fully in a way that she delivers the, those people, she manages them, she looks after them, she takes care of them. Lady Zainab was very close to her father, Imam Ali. When Imam Ali had become the Caliph, he made Kufa his capital. By that time, Lady Zainab was married to her first cousin, Abdullah ibn Jafar, and she was living in Medina. It is widely narrated that when Imam Ali used to feel absence of his beloved daughter, he used to ask his son, Imam Hassan, to bring her to Kufa. So when she arrives in Kufa, he says, Alayka Billay, um, stop them until the night arrives. I will come and receive them myself. He tells the oh, people of Kufa, I urge you that you do not get out of your houses tonight. They say, Ya Ali, why? What's wrong? He said, because tonight the granddaughters of the Holy Prophet will be coming to Kufa. The event where she had so much respect, Imam Ali Salam comes out of Kufa. He says to Imam Hassan Salam, give me the mihar, the, the rope that carries, you know, the camel that carries my daughter. And he says, I will take her to, to Kufa. Some scholars agree that she remained attached to him till his last days. She learnt all the skills which she would use soon in Karbala. The most remarkable event after Ashura was her sermon in the court of Yazid ibn Mavia. Many scholars argue that her sermons completely changed the course of Karbala as she presented her case as someone who had just won the war. She didn't even reflect that she had lost more than half of her family. This bravery was something really exceptional. If you look at people who are emotional, they will not have their senses. They will lose their senses when they're speaking in difficult times. They will not be able to remember the words, they will not be able to say the 
the words properly and if there are you know if there is a woman who has gone through so much um, tragic events where she loses her sons her brothers her nephews um, and she still holds on to her senses so strongly that when she utters the words everything is in place so when she from her sermon you know this one sentence when she speaks to Yazid, kid kay that was a sayak, wana sib jahadak, wallahi la tam hudakrana wala to me to wahiana. You have been uh, conniving against us, O Yazid. Work harder, do as much as you like, oppress us more, but wallahi, by God, you will not be able to remove the remembrance of Ahlul Bayt. Our remembrance will never finish. La to me to wahiana and our. The wahi of my grandfather, the, the Qur'an will never die. Although she was leading the caravan, Lady Zainab knew the importance and the value of the Imam. Imam Zain Labadin's age was between 23 to 26 at the time of Karbala. After Imam Hussain, he became the Imam of his time and his period started right after the beheading of his father. So it became an important responsibility for Lady Zainab to protect her Imam from every danger. It is said that she took the lead and always used to stand in front of him for his protection in case if anybody tried to attack him. She learns the lesson from her mother that when the Imam has been um, uh, not allowed to speak, then she speaks. Uh, when the Imam or the divine leader has been uh, shackled down or has been uh, oppressed and controlled, then it is the duty of uh, the greatest of the women at the time to speak out for the Imam. And this is what her mother did, Fatima Zahra for Imam Ali And she did not wish to, to address in the court of Yazid. She only spoke because Yazid had um, stopped Imam Sajjad from speaking. And when he did not allow the Imam to speak, when the Imam stood up to, to um, deliver his sermon. Um, he said, you're a captive and you're not allowed to speak. Then she stood up and Yazid said, even you're not allowed to speak. And at that point she said, who will stop me? According to one narration, when Imam Zainal Abedin was sentenced to death in Yazid's court, Lady Zainab furiously warned that they will have to kill her first before the Imam. This then gave the Imam the opportunity to speak in the court of Yazid. And then she said, Qum ya Sayyidi wa Mawlai to her nephew, to Imam Sajjad al-Islam and said, Oh my master, oh my uh, Imam, please stand up and, and deliver your sermon. So she prepared the grounds for the sermon of Imam Sajjad al-Islam. Had it not been for her, uh, Imam Sajjad would not be given the, uh, the permission in the court of Yazid to speak. Lady Zainab did not have any sword. The only thing she had was the legacy of her family which made her determined, persistent and fearless. Her sermons were strong enough to defeat Yazid to confess his crime while standing right in front of his throne. She challenged and proved that the women of the Prophet's family are as strong and as determined as the men. In Karbala, she, um, she showed that even men could not perform certain things that she did. Uh, when she stands up, against men when the children are sitting on the floor she picks up a broken arrow and says that i will not allow anyone to come and kill anyone now according to historians when yazid called the heads of the karbala martyrs and put them in front of her the sermon she gave was highly effective and assertive that she made yazid feel guilty when she spoke yazid did not uh, have the courage now because he had so much opposition in the court so he allowed us to speak. But he said a sentence. He said, but whenever someone from her family speaks, uh, then people from my family feel little. Um, and I think she's going to do that. And she did exactly uh, what he was fearing she would do. She made him feel very little in front of all his people. Uh, there were Jews and Christians who were getting up and saying, Yazid, if there was someone from uh, even a 
a horse from uh, from Jesus we had today we would rever that horse because Jesus rode it but this is the granddaughter of your prophet you have no respect for and she turned everything around that he had to say that i i did not authorize the killing of hussein it was ubaidullah ibn ziyad and umar saad who killed him so he backed off so far he was defending and saying that he was a rebel and i killed him but now he was saying i did not authorize it so he had to back off and say because he was feeling that the there'll be uh, a backlash and uh, a, a revolution against him she had caused and then she turned around and looked at the head of her brother and said uh, be my witness i have made your enemy admit to his crime in his own court and he admits that he has killed you uh, wrongfully when leaving medina when ibn abbas uncle of the holy prophet came to know that imam hussein is going towards kufa he asked imam not to take his household with him as kufa was not safe for his family in response to that Lady Zainab said, Oh, Ibn Abbas, do you suggest our leaders embarking on this journey alone and leaving us behind? Do we have anybody except him as our guardian? Never. We live with him and die with him. When Imam Hussein's caravan reached Karbala, tents were set up, and the night before Ashura, when Umar ibn Sa'd marched towards Imam Hussein's camp, Lady Zainab heard the sound of horses coming she approached imam hussein and said my brother do you not hear the sound of the army coming towards us imam hussein replied i just saw the messenger of god peace and blessings of god upon him in my vision he said to me you're marching towards us then lady zainab slapped her face and cried out woe to me imam hussein said Woe is not for you. Be quiet. May God have mercy on you. The eve of Ashura was heartbreaking, knowing that it was almost impossible to survive in this battle. One popular narration says that when Imam Hussein came to his camp and recited a poetry to the servant of Abu Dhar al-Ghaffari, that his time has finally come to leave this world. Imam Zain al-Abidin narrated that when Lady Zainab heard Imam Hussein's poem, She couldn't stop herself and went to Imam Hussein and said, "I'm going to be deprived of a brother. I wish that death had overtaken my life. My mother Fatima is dead, and so is my father Ali and my brother Hassan. Oh, successor of the one who passed away, and the supervisor of those who are still living." When Ali Akbar, son of Imam Hussein, was martyred, Lady Zainab came out and cried. Imam Hussein rushed towards her and took her back to the tent and consoled her. Then when forces led by Umar ibn Sa'd advanced to kill Imam Hussein, Lady Zainab said, "Oh Umar ibn Sa'd, will you just passively watch while Aba Abdullah is being killed?" One by one, every member of her family was brutally killed. She was standing and looking at her two sons Ona and Muhammad being beheaded. She screamed when a poisoned spear passed through the throat of her 6 months old nephew Abdullah, also known as Ali Azghar. She beat her face seeing the forces of Yazid surrounding her brother who wanted to also behead him. Puri tareekh mein duniya kehne ke ek behan ke samne uske bhai ke janaze ko paamal kiya ja raha ho. आप सिर्फ आदमी तस्वर ही कर सकता है और शायद सच्चे मानों में तस्वर करे तो उसका भी कलेजा सीने में रुक नहीं सकता है ठहर नहीं सकता है वो जनाबे जाने भी थी जो उन्होंने देखा था इस तरीके से आफ्टर ऑल दिस ब्लड शेट एंड ब्रूटैलिटी लेडी जैन वॉज लेफ्ट विद ओनली वन नेफ्यू एंड हिज सन एंड सम चिल्ड्रेन एंड वेमेन Yazid's forces started capturing the remaining members and drove the women and children out by torching their tents. It is said that Lady Zainab did not even get the time to mourn for her family as she had to take the command to protect all the women and the children. Someone like Hamid ibn Muslim says that when the people were burning the tents I saw this elderly woman run into the burning tents uh, but because of fire she came out then she went back in then she came out the third time (coughs) 
I knew that something extremely precious to her has has been left behind. So she went back into the tents, burning tents. And this time when she came out, she was holding a young person by his arm and saying, please come out. Sajjad, we have no one but you left. Please come out of the tents. Indeed, those ordeals of 40 days which started on Ashura and ended on Arba'in were the most tough and painful for Lady Zainab because the horror did not leave her even after Ashura as her little niece Ruqayya bint Hussein died in Yazid's prison in Damascus. When Yazid decided to release the Prophet's family from prison, Lady Zainab wanted to mourn for her brother, which she was unable to do since the day of Ashura. So she gathered women and organized the first majlis, which laid the foundation of Azadari. It is disputed amongst historians whether they were released the same year of the battle or a year later. However, it is established that it was the day of Arba'in when they reached Karbala on their return. किसी हद तक की बात मिलती है कि यकीनन जब कैद खाने से छूट करके चले हैं तो तारीखी अख्तलाफ ये है कि मदीने वापस आ करके फिर से गए हैं चहलम के मौके पर पहुंचे हैं करबला में या ये कि नहीं वहीं से छूट करके तो पहले करबला आए हैं और फिर उसके बाद मदीने आए हैं अख्तलाफात हैं लेकिन हम जिस चीज़ को मानते हैं वो यही कि नहीं शायद दिल नहीं मानेगा कि आदमी घर जाए और घर से आए जिनको अभी आज़ादारी का और वाक़ जिस तरीके से गम को मनाना चाहिए था उस तरह से गम नहीं कर सके थे और खसूसियत के साथ वो जगह जहाँ वो छोड़ कर के आए हैं कैसे अगर हल हमारे लिए मुमकिन है तो कैसे पहले वहाँ न जाएँ इसलिए अक्ल और शोर भी कहते हैं कि यही कि नहीं जब कैद खाने से छूटे हैं तो पहले करबला ही गए हैं When she arrived in Karbala it was a heart wrenching scene When she reached uh, uh, Karbala she asked uh, her nephew Mr Sajad Al Islam uh, where is the grave of my brother Hussein so she went to the grave of Imam Hussein Al Islam and on the way to the grave of Imam Hussein Al Islam she started crying and saying to her brother um oh my brother Hussein whenever I came to your presence you stood up for me please welcome me because i am in a very bad state i want to embrace you i want to sit down with you and she started crying to to address him as if he is alive and she's addressing him that's how she spoke to him lady zainab struggle seemed to be unending as rulers of her time did not let her live in tranquility as the historians say that uh, she was forced to leave medina because uh, the way she was disclosing the tragedy of karbala was not uh, making the rulers of medina feel comfortable so they kind of expelled her either to egypt or uh, damascus and she died either in egypt or damascus after after ashura and after the prisoning when they released from uh, sham she always or most of the time she has been commemorating imam hussain alaihi salam and remembering the suffering of imam hussain alaihi salam since then millions of devotees visit the shrine of imam hussain every year on arba'in considering it as a sunnah of lady zainab there is no doubt that lady zainab's character was exceptional zainab kubra sallallahu alaihi had been trained Um, by her mother and her role models were her grandfather her father her mother her two brothers so she had the best of the role models and uh, having the best of the role models she uh, had been nurtured in such a way that she had to face uh, she she was trained um, that she, if no matter what problems she faces she would be able to confront those problems her father had continuously Uh, told her that she will face certain problems and she had to prepare so they had all prepared her for that so she went through the training especially after her mother uh, her father uh, through his life up until the 40th hijra 
um, almost 20, you know, 20 years before Karbala, had uh, trained her in a way that she, he had informed her that she had to face these problems. So she went through the training from her father that when this time comes, she will show the uh, utmost strength, um, spiritual strength and um, capability that no other being could, could show. So having ideal role models like the Holy Prophet Imam Ali and Fatima Zahra Salaam she knew what she had to do. She had a duty to perform. Sayyid Adainab Salaam has a great and effective role and she was the one of the courteous and great lady uh, after Imam Hussain al-Islam Ul Karman led by her uh, from Karbala to Sham and this is uh, with her unlimited and endless capacity of patience she led and she delivered the message of Imam Hussain very strongly. In an era where women dared not speak aloud, she boldly challenged his authority, his actions and his faith in front of a large crowd of dignitaries. Indeed, her courage and wisdom made her victorious against the powerful Yazid ibn Mavia. In the same city where she was taken as a captive, as a war prisoner, as a uh, the court of Yazid, that same Yazid does not have a tomb and she has a tomb in the same city. And it says, welcome to the city of Sayyid Zainab. It nowhere says, welcome to the city of Yazid. Her name lives. She lives. The currency of Yazid has finished. The government of Yazid has finished. The propaganda that Yazid was claiming against Ahlul Bayt al-Islam finished. And she lives. She has lived through history. Her name is greater than ever before. She gave her sons and she delivered her message message of Islam and she saved whole idea of Imam Hussain from Karbala and Islam. Looking at the events that took place after Ashura, one thing is clear, that the women of Karbala were supreme and ahead of their time. They defied Yazid's corrupt practices, challenged him in his own seat of power and most importantly kept Karbala alive and upheld the supremacy and the infallibility of the Ahl al-Bayt. The women of Karbala turned hostilities into opportunities and informed people about the purpose of the tragedy of Karbala. The presence of women in the camp of Imam Hussain played an integral role, an instrumental role, a vital role in not only carrying the message from the time of Karbala through to Kufa, through to Sham, but any subsequent forced movement by the uh, government at the time actually in itself was an opportunity for them to talk about the incident of Karbala. So the rulers of Bani Umayyah moved them back to Medina in order to kind of contain the, uh, the incident. But that in itself meant that all the women, all the uh, daughters of Imam al Hussein, all the wives of Imam al Hussein, all those who were in the camp of Imam al Hussein, the wives of the companions who were martyred with Imam al Hussein, they had conveyed those messages back to the people of Medina. And we know that at the time, there were still companions of Rasulullah in the people of Medina. There were still Tabi'een, there were Sahaba, and there were Tabi'een uh, who lived in Medina during that time. So then, historians who recognize these figures, who recognize these individuals, like for example, Abdullah ibn Ja'far himself, the husband of Lady Zainab and others who lived in, uh, at the time, they themselves then carried on this information and dispersed it. When Lady Zainab and some of the, uh, the women who were with Imam Hussein in Karbala went to Egypt, across the way they had multiple stops and during these stops they conveyed the message of Karbala. All ladies, till continuously five years, they were alive or they are martyrs, they used to five years continuously in their lives, wherever they are or they were, they commemorate, they build or they, uh, they do azadari and they spread the message of Karbala totally. 
It is interesting and also highly important to understand the concept and presence of the Imam. All women sacrificed their sons for the sake of Imam Hussein. And when Imam Hussein was martyred, his son Ali ibn Hussein, Zain al Abidin, subsequently became Imam of his time. Despite immense humiliation, suppression, and torture at various places, the women of Karbala came forward to protect the Imam, knowing his divine importance. The ladies were bound by ropes. They were whipped. They were made to walk hundreds of miles through the Arabian desert to the dark dungeons where they would be held captive in the most horrendous, most horrendous of conditions. This act of allegiance is beyond the human nature of self-devotion, which the women of Karbala showed for their Imam. Ladies of Karbala, spirit, inspiration, bravery, patience, and obediency, and submission towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who criticize and accuse Islam of being oppressive to women need to look at post-Karbala events and the family of Imam Hussein. The women in Karbala did not only support Imam Hussein, but they led the whole campaign against Yazid afterwards. If the ladies hadn't been there, Yazid's men would have narrated their own version of events. Politicians would have twisted the story as they wished to make Yazid out as a hero and as Imam Hussein as a rebel and as a man hungry for power, na'udhu But with the women present and speaking the truth, there was living proof of Imam Hussein salam's message and his martyrdom. The tragedy of Karbala was not just an ordinary event. Karbala signifies and draws a line between right and wrong between the guided and the ignorant, between the oppressed and the oppressor. Had it not been for the women in the camp with Imam Hussein, all these distinctions would have been difficult to determine.